Hey, Nat here. Let's see what's making news. Well, if you've recently come back from Indonesia, you might have to throw out your shoes. The country's experiencing a massive outbreak of foot and mouth disease. That's a serious virus that affects livestock. Now, authorities are worried that it could come into Australia via your sneakers. Here's Amal. Next! Hey mate, how was your trip? Yeah, it was pretty good. Have you got any shoes on? Uh, yeah. To the bin. Yeah, if you are going to Indonesia, don't wear your best kits. Take responsibility, clean their shoes, and as I say, if they really don't need them to come back, then leave them behind. This is all because of a foot and mouth disease outbreak in Indonesia. So what is it? Well, it's a super contagious and deadly disease for cattle, pigs, sheep and goats. Us humans don't really get sick from it, but we can spread it if it's in soil and it ends up on our... Shoes. Oh, I can spread through our shoes. Exactly. Now, fragments of it have been detected in Australia and authorities really don't want it to spread. You see, the disease gets animals really sick really quickly. So if just one case was found, then all livestock across the country would be in lockdown for three days. On top of that, any animals within a certain distance of a case would need to be put down to stop it from spreading more. Authorities have introduced sanitising foot mats at all international airports and are screening every passenger that comes from Indonesia. But they say the best thing you can do is... On your mate. The battle to become Britain's next Prime Minister is down to two. two. It's between former Chancellor Rishi Sunak and Foreign Secretary Liz Truss. Their party, the Conservatives, will hold a vote sometime in the next couple of months and the winner will be announced in September. Meanwhile, the outgoing PM has made his final speech in Parliament, signing off in true Boris Johnson style. Uh, I want to thank everybody here and hasta la vista. Baby, thank you. I know what you're thinking. And yes, Eleanor Patterson is a lot better than me at high jump. She's just won gold at the World Athletic Championships in the US with a jump of 2.02 metres. Oh, yes. This is the first time an Aussie has ever won a high jump gold medal at the World Championships or Olympics. It's, it's crazy. I think I'm going to be shaking my head and in disbelief for, for the whole yeah, month, week, year, who knows. Today we're celebrating a national treasure. It's spongy, dipped in chocolate, sprinkled with coconut and tastes delicious. Mm. That's right, it's National Lamington Day. But have you ever wondered how the Aussie icon came to be? Here's Michelle. Mm. I've got lamingtons! Oh, oh gosh, yes. yes! And I've got some information about the history of lamingtons that you should all hear before we start. The history of Lamingtons is a bit vague. According to Queensland Government House, the Lamington was created in the late 19th century for the state governor, Lord Lamington. Some people think the chef was trying to use up a bunch of random ingredients. Others think he accidentally dropped the sponge cake in chocolate and tried to make it look better with coconut. No, we aren't done. There's also a theory that it might actually be named after Lord Lamington's wife, Lady Lamington. Whether it was Lord or Lady Lamington, the first recipe was apparently published in the Queensland Country Life newspaper as early as 1900. I've got one more thing. If you look up Lamington's, you may find this article, which claims Australia stole the Lamington from New Zealand. But defenders of the Aussie treat realised this was published on April 1st and the writer's name was Olaf Prio, which is an anagram for April Fools. Anyway, one thing we can all agree on is Lamingtons have been loved all over Australia for more than 100 years. Ah, uh, I'm actually not a huge fan of that. Enjoy! Mm. Oh, um, that's all we've got for you today. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Get